According to Arnold Glasgow, one of the tests of leadership is the ability to recognize a problem before it becomes an emergency. This is not far-fetched, as is evident in one vibrant and pragmatic comrade in the history of Nigerian unionism, someone who has made a significant impact and has tremendously contributed towards the growth and development of the country. He is Comrade Quadri, or Laleye. The world today seems to be divided between people who have to make a choice between gold and a good name. While some go for gold, others would rather go for a good name. But that is not the case for Comrade Quadri or Laleye. He possesses gold and a good name. The Don, who has worked for several companies and had been a leader throughout his life, is currently in the Finance and Control Management Department in Nestle, Nigeria, PLC. Guess what? He has proven himself over the years as a man of integrity, virtue, and is a highly respected personality in the community. Comrade Olaleye has, in an exclusive interview with CEO Africa, spoken on his account of stewardship in the last one year, as the National President of Trade Union Congress, TUC. He describes his administration as bringing relief to Nigerian workers in various areas, thereby improving the well-being and protecting the interest of the populace. Let's meet him. Yeah, my name is uh, Comrade Kodri Olale. I work for Nestle Nigeria PLC, a company that I joined almost three decades ago. Uh, actually joined Nestle in uh, 1992 as a human resources assistant and I've been working in that company for almost 28 years and I can say uh, it's really my background to life where I've learned a lot of a lot of things I was employed as an assistant in uh, human resources by work with many other departments then finally now in the finance and control departments and also in finance and control de- departments I've moved to almost all sectors uh, sections of the, of the finance and control starting from the financial account department to costing department to management accounting to control then to administration so it has been very interesting working for Nestle Nigerian PLC. Comrade Olaleye of the Trade Union Congress says his life has always been of struggle, adding that he has been a comrade for a very long time. Uh, there was a problem with unionism in, in companies around the industrial area in Agbara then. And the management of those, all the companies in the industrial area look at it that there is need to change the focus of the union because most of the time what they have is strike, strike, strike every day and at the end of the day we achieve nothing. In conjunction with the association called uh, AFBT, um, Association of Food, Beverages and Tobacco Employers, so they came up with what they called the JCC, Joint Consultative Committee. They encourage every company, apart from having their union, they should also have a group called the Joint Consultative Committee who can listen to management and at the same time listen to the union. Then try to find a meeting point and settle issue. And as a popular opinion leader in my department then, so I was co-opted to be an ordinary member of the JCC. So we're the pioneering JCC member, that was 1993. And we received a lot of, we're sent on a lot of training. As a result of that training, I think that training really brought out the energy in me to lead people. So at a time, I became the chairman of the JCC. Then from there, the union people also enjoy my contribution towards union activities. And they decided to co-opt me 
uh, I was telling somebody that when I joined the union, uh, I didn't contest for any position. The union executives themselves came to my house to invite me to be one of the executives. Why? Because they felt that I have the experience to lead the union. And after trying to reject that offer, they also have to employ the service of management to get me encouraged. And I was elected in absentia, unopposed, as the treasurer of the association then. And since then, I found myself in uh, leading people from being a treasurer, becoming the branch secretary, from being the branch secretary, coming up to be uh, the chairman of the branch. And all these positions, I did not contest with anybody. Immediately I picked my form, people stepped down for me, believing that I should be able to lead. So from being a branch chairperson, then I was also elected as a national trustee. Then from national trustee, I became the vice president of the larger zone in food, beverages, and tobacco senior staff association. And from the vice president uh, in 2015, I was also elected on a post, which has never happened in the history of the union. The election has always been rowdy, full of crisis. But the election that brought me in, in 2015 was a lineup. I was elected as the president on a post. And a year after I became a uh, photo president, I also find myself contesting for TUC as a treasurer of TUC. So since then I've been graduating gradually, gradually, until recently, then I was also unanimously adopted as the president of uh, Trade Union Congress of Nigeria to lead. Speaking on what drives him, he says the passion to carry others along and to listen to people is a motivating force that keeps him going. I want to say I have passion to lead people. I also have passion to listen to people. I have the passion to carry them along. I believe in everybody. Because I believe if I have a single fool in my group, it means I'm a fool. So I have to work on everybody to make sure that we work and we have likely minds. So if it is a single person that is not satisfied on how we are doing something, I better sit down with that person and resolve it. So everybody's opinion counts to me. And that has been my strategy and the opportunity that I have to lead today. The Trade Union Congress president, while revealing that his administration had taken bold steps to build on the foundations laid by his predecessors, says the effort to take the union to new heights is in line with his policies. Leadership by example. And we in TUC and its athletes, we lead, we lead the talk. We lead the talk. That is where we are different from the politicians that will read 1,000 manifestos and they will not be able to achieve uh, a single one out of it. And they get diverted totally. So we lead the talk. CSR is something that we appreciate so, so much. And what we do is that we started as CSR from the affiliate of TUC. We encourage them, let us give back to the society, especially paying our attention to youth development. I'll, I'll give you, for example, in, in my own affiliate union of TUC, which is Food, Beverages and Tobacco Senior Staff Association, what we simply do is that on a yearly basis, we give a kind of uh, reimbursement or bursary to graduate from the universities or colleges that attain uh, the, the level of first class in, in their uh, special, uh, specialization. So we give a token of a million naira. We do that every year, minimum of two every year. Then also what we do is that we also look at uh, some schools. You know, it happens at times. We know in this country, most of the schools, they are not being uh, fully responsible for by the government. 
even though on papers a lot of things can happen, but when you go physically to those schools, those facilities are not on ground. So what we try to do is we try to augment the little they have by providing some furnitures to those schools. And also, if I mention um, another affiliate of TUC, which is the Petroleum uh, Gas Sinister Association, they also look at notable and unrecognized Nigerians. They give award to them on yearly basis. Uh, I think just last year they gave award, not less than one million each, to two Nigerians. Uh, number one, the wife of one of the divers that tried to save people doing a ship uh, a boat mishap in one of the states. And unfortunately, the might died as a result of that. So the Pengerson Petroleum and Gas Senior Staff Association simply called the wife and gave her an award of a million. And also there was an imam that tried to save uh, his community, especially the non-Muslim in that community in one of the states in the north. He was also invited to receive an award of not less than uh, one million. Other ones, other athletes of TUC are also doing that. But for TUC, we have a lot of plan now especially to focus our attention on youth development. Remember that ships don't sink because of the water around them. They sink because of the water that gets in them. That is why Comrade Olaleye, who is known for his calm personality, does not allow happenings around him get inside and weigh him down because he believes in the fact that there are different ways to handle different situations. I believe in the fact that there are a lot of different equipment for different situations. I don't think I need to carry machine gun when I need to use cutlass to fight. And that is the strategy that I have. In every successful journey, there lies an inherent obstacle which might impede progress and bring about setback. On assumption of office, Comrade Quadri Olaleye says he had been confronted with major challenges, including the inability of the government to recognize the union, inappropriate consultation, among others. He noted that when there are issues that require unions' attention, government tends to deny that. Yeah, the, the worst of those uh, challenges is inability of government to recognize the union. What do I mean by recognizing the union? Yes, government have issued certificate of recognition. But when there are issues that requires union attention, government tends to deny that. Then I also have the responsibility as a leader. I am to fight the enemy of my members. So when I'm within my members, when we need to take decision, I need to be very calm to listen and look at the positive and negative area of their decision. So most of the time, I do consultation and I have to do that consultation in a very calm mood. But when you see me outside when it is time to show my color as a unionist, yes, you will see me as a unionist. I will lead a protest, I will lead a strike Stressing the need to assist workers, the union president said workers in Nigeria have dual caps on their heads. They are workers and they are citizens of Nigeria. According to him, 95% of the Nigerian population consists of workers, while the other 5% are politicians. Hence, it is the responsibility and duty of the government to listen to workers. A country without a worker is not possible. A country without a worker is not possible. Workers in Nigeria have dual cap on their head. Number one, they are workers, and also they are citizens of Nigeria. So when you combine these two things, and from the population of Nigeria, if you remove the percentage of workers, what is left? What is left? The percentage of workers in Nigeria, we are more than 95%. The remaining 5% are politicians that are enjoying what we are working for. So, and I think we should be more powerful than them because they are just there 
to reap what we have pla what we have planted, and we are the one producing it. So it's their responsibility and their duty to listen to us. It's very frustrating when you are talking to government. The only language they believe is strike action, protest. A single person is going out. You know the battalions of uh, of cars and security that will go with him. What is the security vote of each governor compared to the mega amount they are paying as salaries? I think it is high time that people need to bring the new humanity in them and consider us that we are also human. And we also voted them in to be able to lead us well and give us our own share of what we are entitled to. Comrade Quadri, however, expresses dissatisfaction with the current situation in Nigeria noting that poverty is on the increase as a result of the high rate of unemployment. Speaking on the causes of unemployment, he said it is high time for the Nigerian government to diversify the economy. As an advocate of nation building, the TUC president says it is the responsibility of the federal government to consult with the representatives of workers, TUC, so as to know the views of the union concerning that aspect of the economy. We need to be uh, a partner, a recognized partner to governments, so that before they take their decision, they also need to consult us to know what we feel in our own aspects of the economy. We need to put pressure on government to diversify the economy. Since the creation of Nigeria, we have been on oil, oil, everybody wants to have their share of the cake. Nobody is talking about diversification, even if somebody is talking about diversification, is on paper. It is our responsibility to engage the government uh, constructively and to apply force where we need to do it. If you ask me today to bring out my write-up on diversification, I have more than 20 papers, the one that we have sent to Central Bank, the one that we have sent to the presidency himself, the one that we have uh, sent to Economy Recovery Committee on how to diversify the economy to the area of agri. Because we know agriculture is a natural blessing and there is need to engage our youth. TUC is coming up with a project now that is going to involve um, the youth, the retirees, the year to retire, the present workers and it's going to be a very big uh, project. So the focus is how to assist the youth to develop interest in agriculture. And we are not just talking of ordinary agriculture, we are talking of semi-mechanized and mechanized agri. We want a situation whereby with the assistance of TUC, we provide a group of young agriculturalists so that's our target. He goes on to charge the federal government to prioritize education in Nigeria, saying that education will go a long way in contributing to nation building. We also need to assist in changing other things. Yes, people are well educated in the country, but of what purpose to our economy? And that is the purpose of our, uh, of our labor center, to, to, to channel a new way to our education education that is useful to the economy. We, we have a lot of professors, but professors of what? We have a lot of graduates. Graduates of what? What impact are they making to the economy? I had somebody saying, the people that gave us independence, deliberately change our future by introducing us to education that is not useful, to, that is not going to be useful to our economy. If our economy is going to make future, then we should be thinking of science and technology. We should be thinking of other aspects of engineering. But at the moment, we are not doing that. Apparently, Nigeria needs to look beyond the revenue generated by this sector of the economy and to consider the need to diversify its economy through agriculture.